In this lesson today, I'll talk about uh, genetic code. Let's see an example here. In this example, you see uh, the human babies are like their human parents. And uh, in other examples, like uh, the other animals or the plants, they reproduce and they produce offsprings of their own kind. It means that there is some information being passed from parents to the offsprings so that the offsprings are like their parents. This information being passed from parents to the offsprings is known as hereditary information. And this information is passed on from parents to the offsprings through the gametes during the sexual reproduction. For example, uh, if this is a male, a male produces male gametes known as sperms, and a female produces female gametes known as eggs. These uh, sperms and eggs fuse together by a process called fertilization and they make zygote. So information from parents uh, is passed on to the zygote through uh, these uh, haploid gamete cells during fertilization. The zygote then undergoes repeated mitosis, which produces genetically identical cells, which then undergo a process of differentiation and a division of labor and specialized into cells, then tissues, which make organs and organ systems and develop into an individual. So as there is some information, hereditary information being passed from parents to the offsprings, so the offsprings produced are always alike their parents. Uh, DNA is known to be uh, the genetic material or hereditary material. Uh, for a hereditary material or for a substance to act as uh, a genetic material, uh, it must be able to store information and it must be able to be copied so that this information can be passed from uh, cell to cell uh, by mitosis or from parents to the offsprings uh, during reproduction. This genetic information on a DNA molecule is divided into segments known as genes. For example, if this is the DNA molecule, this DNA molecule has coded information on it, which is divided into these segments. So each segment that controls synthesis of single polypeptide. So this fragment of a DNA molecule, which controls synthesis of one polypeptide is known as a gene. In this case, so this is a gene 1, this is gene 2 and this is gene 3. This gene 1 that controls the synthesis of polypeptide 1 and this controls the synthesis of polypeptide 2 and this controls the synthesis of polypeptide polypeptide 3. So a gene can be defined as
gene can be defined as coded information information on a DNA molecule which controls synthesis of a single polypeptide. So this process of synthesis of a polypeptide or of a protein involves Number one, this coded information is copied onto an mRNA molecule by a process called transcription and then this mRNA is translated by ribosomes attached on them to make a chain of polypeptide by a process called translation. So protein synthesis involves two steps Number one is transcription, which is copying of uh, hereditary information or genetic information from DNA to an mRNA molecule. And then synthesis of a polypeptide. So this is a polypeptide. So uh, as you already know, a gene has a specific sequence of nucleotides on a DNA molecule that codes for a particular polypeptide. Uh, I, have, I have already uh, described or defined a gene, but let's see a gene has a specific sequence of nucleotides on a DNA molecule which codes for a particular polypeptide. So if there are two polypeptides, two different types of polypeptides in an insulin molecule, there will be two genes involved in the synthesis of insulin. Similarly, there are two types of uh, uh, polypeptides in a hemoglobin molecule, two alpha globin and two beta globin. So there will be two uh, genes involved in the synthesis of a hemoglobin molecule. So now let's see if this is a DNA molecule. You know, a DNA molecule is a double-stranded DNA molecule. We have already understood in another lesson where we discussed the structure of a DNA molecule. So a DNA molecule has two anti-parallel strands of nucleotide, polynucleotide chains. So one chain, if it has adenine here, the other will have complementary a base uh, with the thiamine. Then if it has guanine here, the other will have cytosine. If this has cytosine, the other will have guanine. So you can write any uh, sequence here. However, a gene would obviously have a specific sequence of these nucleotides. So there are four possible nucleotides uh, that would be arranged in some specific order on a DNA molecule. 
this order of DNA uh, of nucleotides in a DNA molecule is, uh, you know, uh, determined by a precise copying of DNA uh, during the cell division or when it is passed from parent to the offspring. So that is why uh, genetically uh, identical or, uh, you know, identical information is passed from parents to the offsprings and uh, this uh, produces offsprings which is like their parents. So we have, uh, you, you can write any, any sequence here, okay? But the other strand would have complementary nucleotides or complementary bases here. Uh, this information is copied onto an mRNA by transcription. One of the strand acts as a template strand. So this strand acts as a template strand. And an mRNA molecule is made by a process called transcription. An mRNA molecule synthesized will have complementary uh, nucleotide sequence on it. However, instead of thymine, it will have uracil and instead of deoxyribose uh, nucleotides, it will have ribose nucleotides. So, uh, against thiamine, it will have adenine here. Against cytosine, it will have guanine here. Against guanine, it will have cytosine here. And against uh, thiamine, it will have adenine here. Against this guanine, it will have cytosine here. And against cytosine, it will have guanine here. And against adenine, it will have uracil here instead of thiamine. Uh, an mRNA molecule have, will have a uracil here and uh, against T it has A, against C it has G, against G it has C, against T it has A, against A it has U again, against T it has an A and against T it has an A. Okay. Now this sequence of nucleotides on a DNA molecule is read in a series of three nucleotides together. So this series of three nucleotides, then the next three nucleotides, and this next three nucleotides, and the next three nucleotides, and so on. This series of three nucleotides is copied onto an mRNA, and um, mRNA will have a series of three complementary nucleotides on it to that of the DNA. On a DNA template strand, it is known as a code or a genetic code or a triplet code. Whereas on an mRNA, it is complementary to the DNA template strand and it is known as codon. So, a code is a code or genetic code is a series of three consecutive nucleotides on a DNA template strand
which codes for single amino acid single specific amino acid whereas a codon is a series of three consecutive nucleotides on an mRNA complementary to the triplet code on a DNA molecule. As there are uh, three possible nucleotides uh, that could be found on a DNA molecule uh, that have uh, uh, you know, an adenine base, uh, a guanine base, uh, a thymine base, and a cytosine base. So, uh, if there are uh, possible combinations of these four nucleotides made, each combination having three nucleotides in it, then there are 64 possible uh, combinations that could be made. Uh, these combinations can be made by using uh, permutation rule which is uh, number of total nucleotides which is n and it is 4 and number of nucleotides in a combination or a code which is R n is 3. So the formula may be n raised power r that is 4 raised power 3. So you will have 4 into 4 into 4. So this would have 16 possible combinations or 64 possible triplets. Each triplet codes for a specific amino acid. This can be found from the table given here, but you don't need to uh, you know, remember uh, the names of amino acids and you don't need to you know, uh, learn uh, these possible codes or combinations of these triplets. So, for instance, uh, the f if this is first letter is A, uh, second letter is A, and the third letter is A, so this will be an A, A, and A, a code for phenylalanine. Similarly, you will have an A, A, and G, a code for uh, phenylalanine again. You will have uh, uh, A, A, and T, and you will have A, A, and C for leucine. So these are the possible triplet codes for these amino acids. There are 20 different amino acids that have been uh, named here. You don't need to uh, know their names. However, so you see, uh, it is 
phenyl alanine it is leucine it is leucine again so there are many codes possible for uh, leucine then isoleucine methionine valine serine proline threonine alanine tyrosine histidine glutamine aspergine lysine uh, and aspartate glutamic acid cysteine tryptophan arginine serine arginine and glycine you see there are uh three triplets that have been you know uh, mentioned as stop here so these are called stop codes and they do not specify any amino acid in a polypeptide chain uh, they, they would have a from here you know the first letter will be in a second letter will be t and the third letter will be t for this other will have first letter a second letter t and the third letter c and this will have first letter a second letter c and the third letter t so these are three triplet codes still uh, you do not need to know uh, these three triplet codes that code uh, that do not code for any uh, amino acids similarly uh, when these 64 uh, genetic codes are copied onto an mrna then the 64 possible codons are produced on an mrna molecule for instance if this is the dna strand which has adenine here which has guanine here which has guanine here which has guanine here which has cytosine here it has thymine here it has guanine here it has cytosine here adenine here thymine here cytosine here guanine cytosine cytosine adenine and adenine so this is a dna template so you know uh, the triplet codes will be uh, the first triplet code may be agg uh the second is uh gct then you have gca you have tcg and you have cca and so on when mrna is synthesized by transcription the mrna molecule made will have the complementary base sequences on it and these complementary base sequences or nucleotide sequences in a series of 3 are the codons that we have already discussed so this would be first codon then will be the second codon then will be the third codon and similarly the fourth codon and the fifth codon so this is the first code second code third code fourth code and fifth code if first code is acg then what will be the codon on an mrna at the first position at first position it will be u c c at second position a codon will be c g a at third position on an mrna the codon will be c g and u at fourth position this will be a g and c and uh, at fifth position this will be g g and u so you see uh, the codons on mrna are complementary codons 
on mRNA are complementary to the codes on DNA molecule. Now the next step is the protein synthesis which takes place on a ribosome and the process is known as translation. During translation, a polypeptide is made. This polypeptide will have five amino acids in this polypeptide chain. This is the first amino acid, the second amino acid, the third amino acid, fourth amino acid, and fifth amino acid. Which amino acid out of 20 amino acids will be at position number one? This is determined by this codon. This UCC codon codes for a specific amino acid. And to see that, uh, so to see uh, which amino acid will be incorporated in a polypeptide at position number one, we will have to look for uh, the codon and amino acid coded from this table showing mRNA codons. So uh, the first letter is U, the second letter is U and the third letter is, sorry, the first letter is U, uh, the second letter is C and the third letter is C. So we will have UCC, this would code for serine. So we will have SER at this position. At second position, which amino acid will be incorporated in this polypeptide chain? Uh, this we could find from the mRNA codon from the second position, which is CGA. This uh, we can find from this uh, table. See, uh, the first letter is C, uh, second letter is G, and the third letter is A. So this is Uh, the first letter is C, the second letter is G, and the third letter is A. So this should be, you know, an arginine. So second position will have another amino acid arginine. At third position, which are, uh, amino acid will be on, incorporated here? This we would find from this codon from a third position on mRNA, which is C, G, U. So first letter is C second letter is G and the third letter is U. So this is again for arginine. So this is again for arginine. So there are two codes for uh, codons for an arginine. Uh, we will discuss that uh, there are more than one codons or more than one codes possible for one amino acid. And that is why this genetic code is known as degenerate. So uh, one amino acid can have more than one possible uh, codons. Now on a fourth position, let's see, on a fourth position, which amino acid is got incorporated into uh, this uh, polypeptide chain? This we can find from this codon from the fourth position, which is A, G and C. So at first position, it has A, uh, at uh, second position, it has G and at third position, it has C. So this is serine again. So at fourth position, this would have serine again. And you see, uh, it is uh, another codon for serine. So there are two possible codons uh, that we have found yet for serine, though there are more than uh, two for serine. And at the fifth position, 
at fifth position, which amino acid will be uh, placed here or joined here in this polypeptide chain? Uh, at first position, it is G. At second position, it is G again. And at third position, it is U. So this would we would find glycine. So glycine is embedded at this fifth position. So this is how this chain would continue to grow and would have a specific order of amino acids uh, joined at the specific positions, making a long polypeptide chain. Now, uh, let's see some more about the genetic code. Uh, let's talk about the features. of a genetic code. As we have already discussed that a genetic code is a triplet code. A genetic code is a triplet code. Means a genetic code has a genetic code has a series of three consecutive nucleotides which code for a specific amino acid. As we have discussed already, uh, that uh, A G G code for serine, A G G codes for serine amino acid. And uh, CGA code for CGA codes for arginine. The next feature is that a genetic code is universal. It means that in every living organism, these amino acids will have the same genetic code. If serine is coded by AGG in human, it will be coded by the AGG in all other cells, whether they are plant cells, they are bacterial cells, or even in viruses. So that shows that genetic code is universal. Number three, uh, genetic code is degenerate. Uh, degeneracy of the genetic code means uh, that uh, one amino acid can be coded by more than one triplet codes. For example, amino acid methionine has only 
वन कोड पॉसिबल विच इज विच वी कैन फाउंड फ्रॉम यू नो द टेबल फॉर जेनेटिक कोड्स सो फॉर मैथ्यू नीन इट इज वी कैन फाइंड इट फ्रॉम हियर फॉर मैथ्यू नीन इट इज टी ए सी फॉर मैथ्यू नीन इट इज टी ए सी बट फॉर अदर माइनो एसिड्स लाइक फॉर सीरीन देर आर मैनी पॉसिबल कोड्स वी कैन ऑल्सो फाइंड कोड्स फॉर सीरीन फ्रॉम द टेबल फॉर जेनेटिक कोड्स so the possible uh, genetic codes for serine include you don't need to remember them you should understand that uh, there are various possible uh, genetic codes for serine uh, for serine you can have uh, a a a a a g a a t a a c so you can ha- have various possible codes for it you can have uh, a a a a a g a a c and a a t so all these triplet code for serine so that is why it is called degenerate the next fourth feature of genetic code is that it has punctuations dna code has punctuations uh in a dna molecule there there, there are you know start points where the gene starts and the protein synthesis begins here and where the gene ends and it ends the protein synthesis here so this first triplet at the start of this gene is known as an initiation code or start code whereas this terminal code where the polypeptide chain synthesis that ends is known as stop code or stop codon there are three possible stop codes that we can find from uh, the table uh, that include uh, ATT ATC and ACT so that is ATT ACT and there is one more it is ATC ATC. So these three are stop codes. However, uh, punctuations like commas are not present in a DNA uh, molecule. Uh, the coded information in a gene is read continuously. Uh, so these are the consecutive nucleotides or genetic codes uh, present on a DNA molecule. So there are no. free nucleotides present that do not code for anything so uh, these consecutive nucleotides code for consecutive amino acids so that is how uh, the punctuations for stop code are present on a uh, you know a dna molecule but not for 
other commas, etc. Now the question is, why a genetic code is a triplet code? Why it is not singlet or duplet? A means a genetic code has three nucleotides, consecutive nucleotides in a series that code for one amino acid. Why one nucleotide does not code for one amino acid? Why one nucleotide on a DNA molecule does not code for one amino acid. You know, there are 20 different possible amino acids that are found in the proteins. Uh, you do, do not need to remember their names, but fewer of them are glycine, lysine, leucine, tyrosine, methionine, serine, arginine, maybe uh, glutamic acid, tryptophan. So there are 20 different amino acids. So 20 different amino acids are found in protein stru structure. Whereas there are four possible nucleotides found on a DNA molecule. It may be adenine, it may be guanine, it may be cytosine, or it may be thiamine. So if one nucleotide codes for one amino acid, the proteins should have not more than four different amino acids in their structure. So uh, it is not possible that genetic code is singlet as we know that there are 20 different amino acids found in the polypeptides. Similarly, the genetic code is not a duplet. If a genetic code is duplet, then only 16 possible codes may be there for the synthesis of polypeptide, which is still an insufficient number for the 20 amino acids. So it cannot be uh, the duplet as well. See, if this is a DNA molecule, which has adenine, thiamine, guanine, guanine, cytosine, adenine, thiamine, guanine, cytosine, cytosine. So, if one nucleotide codes for one amino acid, only we can have four different types of amino acids possible. A will code for one amino acid, then another this will code for the same amino acid, T will code for another amino acid, and G will code for the another amino acid, this G will code for another amino acid, uh, C will code for, uh, you know, another amino acid. So you see, there are four colors shown in this polypeptide, which will obviously be joined by ribosome together to make a polypeptide chain. So this is not possible. If this is duplet, any two code for one polypeptide, 
So there are 16 possible combinations. By applying a permutation rule, uh, we can find that n raised power r is equal to n is 4 and there are duplets. So each combination has two amino acids in it. So we will have 4 into 4 that would give us 16 possible codes. So this is still an insufficient number for uh, coding 20 different amino acids in a polypeptide chain.